Hello to everyone, this is Vishal and hope all are doing good and my good wishes with you that what you desire, you always achieve that. Okay, so let us start the topic of the day that's related to the Rx Java as these be sessions going on and we have done uh, some previous tutorials or previous sessions related to the Rx Java, some basics, some theory and uh, uh, retrofit callings and uh, beside that we have some other tutorials in which we have uh, used the retrofit with room and lot of stuff we but those who are new and uh, watching this tutorial or session just go for the playlist of the rx java and learn from the scratch what is the rx java and what are observables and this kind of stuff so then you uh, be uh, here and learn the schedulers so today is the topic for the rx java schedulers and uh, two schedulers we have to learn that is a schedulers io and number two is this computation so these two we we have to learn today and a uh, lot of other things we achieve and uh, we have to complete the task and last time i uh, discussed the operators of uh, the um, rx java that's your observe on and subscribe on so there will be a the lot of theory but uh, just be that's be good if you uh, learn that because of that will help you on the coming sessions and today also be the scheduler related uh, theoretical part in which we have to learn some uh, schedulers two schedulers so and the basic things where we need it so uh, let us start the topic and first we go for the main thread so uh, here we have a ui thread and the main thread and uh, if you go for the definition of this thread in your android uh, tutorials uh, if you search that so there be so the the ui thread or a main thread executes our applications means where the most of our application code is run and all of our application components that's your activities services content providers and broadcast receivers that are created in this thread so that means whenever you work with your Android app, what happened, that means your main thread is working there. And on that main thread, which is in the charge of handling UI, that means all UI uh, things we have to work, user interactions, we need it, and uh, receiving lifecycle events as the new component of the life cycles, we have to work again. I will make some practicals on that with the view model. Uh, so. So these things, these standard of uh, 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 this kind of stuffs, we have to learn with this uh, main thread. But uh, sometimes, we, what happened that on the activity, we load a lot of data with there on our main thread, and what happened that means sometimes the app be hang and in in our uh, old approaches. So uh, we moved towards the async task be there because of synchronous environment create a problem with the main thread it's uh, uh, it's created the uh, ANR issues mostly that means application not responding if you go with the last tutorial so you learn that what exactly is that so we have to achieve some long-running uh, computations or operations uh, just like you are decoding a bitmap accessing a disk performing network requests separately with the async task so we need a classes like a thread we need a classes handler we need a classes async task so we can do and achieve that so that's the old way but now today we are working with the rx java so here we have a two good operators as we discussed last time that uh, that is your observe on and subscribe on and where we need it observe on that means mostly we need that observe on in your main thread that means where we have to show and on subscribe on we have to work with that that means we need a schedulers with that and the schedulers be like your io and your computation kind of things so here uh, as we discussed last time whenever any task be doing uh, the process behind the scene that means thread pool be working there and that thread pool it be related to your bounded and unbounded behaves so that means here we have our applications and uh, last time I discussed this this, this uh, uh, diagram that's your applications we have we have a multiple task and there will be the queue of tasks there. and there we have a threadings uh, working with that and once task be finishes that means thread pool 
uh, be going on or working on behind the scene and the task we finish that means you represent or show that whatever your task on your main night thread if you work with async task and if you work with the sync task that means directly related to that so here we discussed last time that we have a bounded and bounded queues and uh, these uh, these we may, uh, means bounded means there will be some size restrictions with the uh, and there will be no any size with your unbounded way so schedulers be likewise we, we behave like by state that means whenever you use the schedulers in your subscribe bound that's bounded and unbounded behave they are working and uh, uh, again uh, there is a thread pools so i'm talking about the thread pools that thread pools provide a group of background threads that accept the nq submitted work if you need to monitor system triggers during this time so that thread pool can run multiple parallel instances of a task so you should ensure that your code is thread safe if you go for the multitasking the same environment and enclose variables that can be accessed by more than one thread in a synchronized flock so these approaches will prevent one thread from reading the variable while another is writing on it so these kind of stops we have achieved by the uh, async task and there will be about two main methods in which we have worked that means your uh, background process and your on post execute so what happened there that means if you want to do some background process you work with the background process and once that completed you will show that on your post execute so that's the way but here we have uh, two important operators just like there's a subscribe on in which the schedulers we work that means your background process that the schedulers work and on your subscribe on that sorry on your absorb on that means you want to work with the downstream and you have to show that whatever we you have done on your background processes so as we discussed that that on background process be behave like uh, your subscribe on and on post execute that be behaves like your observe on behave so that's two operators uh, we are working in rx java but that observe on also be works with the scheduler but i will describe you on other approaches so here the observe on operators specify a different scheduler that the observer will use to send notification to its observers because of observable uh, what happened in the observable that means it if it may emit the data there that means we have to represent it by the observer okay so that's the and here we need as android scheduler dot main thread so in a rx java that's very more important so as we uh, discussed many times the thread pool of a java represent a group of worker and threads that are waiting for the job and reused many times so how we can how it achieve that that means it is on task basis so what is the conclusion the conclusion is that here whenever you're working with the rx java we need a two operators and one operators we work for the subscribe on that's be your behind the scenes that you're doing background processes and that background process we have to learn today so that means you have to pass a scheduler two kind of schedulers first the so number one is your schedulers io so io as the name is that means input output operations so that means this is one of the most common types of schedulers that are used and they are generally used for io related stuff i already discussed many times so that means whenever you work with the rx java you have to work with that scheduler io that means if you call the retrofit or simple task be there of loading task be there and that's we you work with that schedulers io but you have a long running processes or computation processes so that i will discuss some other day but just if you call the things and uh, simply load the things so that means use scheduler io and uh, here io is uh, backed by unbounded thread pool that's the meaning of that that means it is uh, backed by uh, that means supported and it is sort of things that you use the non computationally intensive task that is most important whenever you work with a non computationally intensive task that means we have to work with io so always be uh, 
use this so that is the stuff that doesn't put much load on the cpu okay and the scheduler io by the default is cache thread scheduler so that means we can say that it is a cache thread schedulers which is uh, something like a new thread scheduler with the thread caching so why to use the cachings and other things that we'll discuss when we go in a more deep and uh, as we did in on my last tutorials we did a let profit call and and rx java using the scheduler io that means whenever you work with that that means you fetch data create and returns the scheduler intent for io bond work the implementation is backed by executed thread pool that will grow as needed this can be used by asynchronously performing blocking io and do not perform computational work so that's the important point whenever we use our scheduler io that's the most important and if you want to use any error so that means you catch any error that is your uncode exceptions error handler so that's the work and if i uh, discuss about a small uh, behave of this as we did it many times that's where observable and here uh, i'm using just and here i'm putting some items like a one and two and i'm just doing a subscribe on as i dis uh, discussed last times and here i'm using schedulers dot i and dot subscribe and under that subscribe just want to check that it is your so here you can see that uh, we have a methods of observers that need to be show here and just use this um, values to print and here it is as okay so we do not represent it on the main thread just be a simple thread values be there so it always be show you that your cache thread be here whenever you work with the i and uh, number two is yeah so number two is whenever you want to do it with the main thread you have to work with observer so let's see what happened so you can say that it is a rx cache scheduler thread schedulers b io so but whenever you work with your observer one as we discuss and it shows you the main so that means that works be your downstream and it show to you, uh, you with your main ui thread so that's the way uh, you have to do but this is this work we want as we have a retrofit call as we did it on the last time that's for the employee result and uh, here we have observe one for the main thread and here we have subscribe on the schedulers uh, dot io but if there be a lot of computations or logics be there just like if i'm using uh, a, a small uh, logic i am using that me if i want to show that observable or ambit be just uh, okay i am using the range 1 to 10 so maybe if i say that this is a uh, some some logic some calculations be there some counting be there it is small but lot of things be there if you ever were big data from the retrofit so for that uh, whenever you work with the app subscribe on and you say schedulers dot it works for all but computation be a very good scheduler whenever we use a computational task that I will discuss to you so that's your observe one and there you can see the scene is your integer kind of things okay so when you run this and you can see that uh, the name of the change here we have a computational task be here for the threads base so basically what i'm trying to say that whenever you call the retrofits for the small functioning small api calls and other things you just go for the io 
and whenever you work with your uh, calculations kind of retrofit callings where callbacks related to the lot of logics a lot of calculations behind the scenes so you can work with that or any logic you emit from your observable so that's your click and you can see that this is your rx computation 10 times behavior thread pulls thread pulls you can see that this is your computation thread pull so you there will be a thread pulling be, behind the scenes with the computation task so that i'm trying to show so that's your thread pull okay so i use scheduler with the cache sometimes some other time we will discuss computational task is that a computational task is defined as an any type of calculations that includes both arithmetical non arithmetical steps and follows as a well defined models and algorithm so basically when it comes to computations think about algo and the math so that means on that kind of uh, task you have to work with your cpu so that means sometimes you want to calculate something with your async thread so you have to work with that kind of works java uh, that I will discuss to you and I make a small practical with the retrofit on that case uh, for you So computation the scheduler is quite similar to IO scheduler as this is backed by thread pool 2 and The number of threads can be used is affixed to the number of cores present in the system So it is good for performing small calculations generally quick to perform operations and we have to use scheduler dot computations so the computation scheduler by default limits the number of threads running in the parallel to the value and the computation schedulers use limited number of threads because of the limited is tightly associated with number of cpu cores you have so here if you go for the io that means it hangs with that and we that is unbounded so it take sometimes times calculational and other negative effects of that Sometimes you're not getting your right result with you. So on that cases you use that computation So CPU bound work is any kind of uh, work with those efficient completions is bounded by hardware characteristics of your CPU So that means we have a scheduler static intervals timer time count buffer delay escape So that kind of things you have to work with the computational when you work with parallelly with uh, or async task on your Rx Java so that's a basic difference you have to learn and I will make a new practical on which we have to work with the new thread and other uh, approaches of the retrofit calls where we use it uh, that and other schedulers also. So well soon I will upload the next tutorial and I will upload the clean architecture second part of the tutorial soon. So you have to uh, just work with that and learn. Thank you so much for the day and uh, thank you so much.